Frank J. Avella with Awards Daily. Venezuela's international Oscar entry is M Miguel Angel Ferrer's The Shadow of the Sun, a touching film that depicts the harsh realities of rural Venezuelan lives, but also offers hope, optimism, and music. I'd like to welcome Miguel, the film's director, and its star, Carlos Manuel Gonzalez. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miguel, can you speak a little bit about where the idea for this film came from? Well, uh, it came from several different places, but mainly uh, my travels through the interior of the country with one of our producers, Will Romero, who's from Acarigua, the town where we shot. Um, I had never gotten a chance to see that part of the country, and he convinced me to come to Venezuela in, the, in 2020, uh, right before the pandemic to to see the country and to shoot there a couple of music videos and commercials i got to see the people of acarigua the people of el llano of the plains and the way that they greeted me the the way that they their, their resilience their that's what really impressed me um uh, every day it's an obstacle over there with so many different things as you see in the film and yet they have this happiness, they have this hope for a better future, for a better tomorrow. And that's really what, what inspired me. It reminded me of the Venezuelan spirit, a spirit that doesn't stop no matter what the obstacle to in the pursuit of their dreams. So that that's how really that's really what I wanted to encapsulate in the story of these two brothers who have a seemingly impossible dream, a seemingly impossible task. And um, how they join forces to to make it happen. Uh, was it difficult to get financing? Uh, very, very. Um, but uh, we had a couple of uh, private equity um, angels that uh, that came down and said, you know what, uh, this is a story that's worth telling, and um, and we want to tell it because it's a story of our country, of our people. Uh, Carlos, um, I, well, first of all, it's a, it's a wonderful performance, so congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, y you chose to play Leo in a very subtle manner, which is, is so powerful. Um, can you speak about bringing him to life? Uh, sure. Well, um, you know, I always say that there's always a little bit of, of oneself in every character we play. Um, Leo is this guy who is reaching his middle age and you know finding himself in some sort of a you know midlife depression or or you know not uh, finding his his self in a moment where he he feels he hasn't reached his dreams and his goals and he's been uh you know working from jumping from job to job to just make ends meet and and uh you know as an actor, I, I feel, you know, uh, how many times have we not feel frustrated, you know, with, with our own careers and not reaching the goals that we dream about. And, and, and you know, we have to keep on going and, and have the people around us that support us, like our family and friends, and, and always have a little push and a, a little reminder of, of how good you are and, and how good of a person you are and, and you're doing what you love. So of course there's a lot of Leo on me. So I attacked it. I, I I approach it that way, you know, looking at myself first, and and then you know having this rapport with this uh, wonderful kid who plays my brother Angelo Lopez, um, having to to know him and to and to interact with him uh, for for uh, like two to three months before starting to shoot. So we had we we had this chance of of uh, building this chemistry, this brotherly chemistry between us uh, before shooting, um, getting to know his family, he getting to know mine, took him out to dinner and then, you know, uh, uh, practicing sign language with him. And, and uh, it all started from there. It's a beautiful story. So it was kind of, it might sound weird, but it was kind of easy for me to portray something that was so close to me. Yeah, it's funny. You just answered a, a few questions of mine, and one was about the tremendous chemistry the two of you had. It was, it was palpable. Um, and M Miguel, where did you find him? He's uh, he's remarkable. So we did a we did a casting call for uh, in the deaf community in Caracas, and as you can imagine, deaf deaf actors in Caracas it's very very limited. We had and that fit within that age range, right? 
Uh, we had two candidates come in and they were great, but we didn't quite fit the role the way we wanted to. So producers being the great producers that they are, they said, okay, let's find them in Colombia. Let's find them in Argentina and Mexico. And I was, I said, no, this, this guy exists. This guy exists and he exists in Venezuela. So the ladies, the interpreters that were teaching us Venezuelan sign language, uh, Carlos, myself, and a couple of the producers for about two months before uh, production, you know, we get, we, we, we called them up and we said, look, um, can you find us every single deaf young man from 20 to 30 years of age in the entire country it doesn't matter where they are we'll pay their bus ticket their plane ticket we'll bring them to the capital can you get them here in five days and uh and they they stepped up to the task to the challenge and they brought us around seven to eight uh young men a deaf young men who had never acted in their life before and uh angelo came in last and he's a, a young man from the uh, part of El Valle, part of Caracas, uh, um, that's a, a low income uh, part of Caracas, let's just say. And um, and as soon as he came into the room, he he lit up the room mm. and he was fantastic. As soon as he came in, we, we knew um, and he was wonderful. Uh, he was nervous. You know, he was flubbing the lines, but Carlos was there. Carlos was a big part of the casting process. For every character, including uh, Alex, and um, yeah, when when after he after he was there, you know, we knew we knew we had some something magical in him, and um, and then he started to do the work. He started to get the script. He would have it laminated in a folder. He would work with Carlos a lot, work with the interpreters. So when he came into on set, he was he was fine tuned, and and both of them were able to play and and create this chemistry. Wow. Well, let's talk about all the hats you wore on this film. I mean, did you cook for everybody too? Uh, <laughs> you, you wrote, you directed, you produced, you edited. Uh, I wanted to ask which which role was the most enjoyable and which was the most difficult? Oh, wow. Um, the most enjoyable was uh, the directing part of it. You know, getting in there with these guys and with Gracie Mena and Camila Curtis and 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 rehearsing. That's the process that I really enjoy. Um, I studied theater for four years at college, not to be an actor, but to acquaint myself with the work of the actor. And I really love working in the performances and the characters because it's it's what makes them human, right? What makes them relatable and palpable to us and to the audience. Um, that was my favorite process. Um, and directing on set and having the camera on me and being able to um, shoot and, and shoot myself and also direct. I was only able to do that because of the great team that I had um, uh, behind me, the ACs, the director of photography, Jose Duque. Um, it was a great collaborative effort. And then the least favorite part was obviously the editing because uh, you have to- So they, much good stuff, right? Yeah, they, they say you have to kill your babies, you know, in yeah. uh, editing room. And uh, Carlos and everybody else and Angelo and Gracie Mena gave such fantastic performances that it was a really difficult task to be able to balance out the tone and the beats of the of, of the pieces and of the scenes because they gave, they gave you five great performances, which is the one that works perfectly for this part of the scene, for this part of the- of the of the movie so that was the most difficult part and then obviously cutting down the film from its first runtime of first cut all the way to the the finished that was uh some some scenes uh were cut completely uh mm -hmm. to carlos's um uh, uh pain uh <laughs> but uh, that was the most difficult part of it but it was part of the process yeah. Well, you chose well. Um, this this question is for both of you. This is one of the few queer theme films in contention for the International Prize. Can you speak a little bit about the dangers of being openly gay in rural Venezuela? And why is it so threatening? Why is it such an attack on masculinity, in your opinion? And do you see it changing? Well, um, to be honest, maybe uh, the movie portrays... Um, a situation that is very separate and very uh, particular, which is, you know, a deaf guy coming out to his brother. Um, and they come from a rural part of Venezuela where, you know, uh, as, as you say in Spanish, and I and I, I think you said it, you say it in, in English as well, you know, small town, big hell. 
you know um um these are a couple of guys that that are middle to low class in a small town in the south part of the country where people have their own mindsets and you know they might treat a young gay kid you know different it does not happen in the big cities it does not happen every day it's not like it's not, I, I i don't want you to think that gay kids or gay people are in some sort of threat every day in the country that is it that is it, it does not exist but this was a particular situation a fictional situation of of a, of a young deaf kid coming out to his brother in a very secluded town in the south of the country uh maybe with not too much culture and education so so you know that was we that 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 is what we were trying to portray but it's not a regular thing in the country i don't want you to think that right no, I, I understand my family's from sicily and there are areas of sicily where it's not necessary that they'll be killed but they will be ostracized yeah right. of course right, right. of course yeah and it was part of you know, i'm not part of the lgbtq community but um but our production designer uh, and great friend Vince Sanchez Zambrano is, and he's from Venezuela, from Ciudad Bolivar, another another uh, city in the country, small city, uh, on the other side of the country. So when dealing with this part of the story, I really want I we, we talked a lot, we talked for days about this and about his experiences too, um, being gay and uh, um, and being in the country, and also uh, that happening in the late nineties and early two thousands. What was that like? What was his experience like? But we also didn't want to make it a, a. We wanted to make it a part of the character, but not not highlight it in a way that it becomes about that. That the story becomes about that. The story is about searching for your dreams and and overcoming all these all these different obstacles that are part of Venezuelan society, even if they are um, uh, in in a in a small area, or even if they are targeted, or even if they are. Uh, it, it's not the the status um, uh, of of the entire uh, society, but there are these 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 parts where there's still homophobia, there's still ableism, there's still so much uh, happening, and I wanted to make sure that that was high that was highlighted in a way in a in a subtle way, and it was part of the characters that we saw it through the characters, that it wasn't and 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 that's one of the parts that that I feel most proud about is is how people that are in that community have come up to us and told us you know we we i loved it how you we loved it how you how you treated it we loved it how you how you put made it a part of the character um and and a part of the story because i wanted to paint all the different colors the shadow and the light of our of our culture i um i wanted to ask about a specific scene from the writer's perspective and the actor's perspective for me it's the most cathartic scene in the film and it's when alex finally lets loose on yoli in front of in front of his brother um it's so potent because it's so true to life and it's also as a viewer something that i didn't expect but i was i guess in the back of my mind hoping for well um that's actually the first scene that I ever came up with in the entire movie. In fact, I came up with that moment. It was a, like a bit of inception in my head. Um, and then I realized, okay, this is a story about two brothers, one who can sing, one who, who has a beautiful voice, one that literally doesn't. And how he, he gives his brother the voice that he never had. This deaf young man giving his brother the voice and the courage he never had not only to stand up to an emotionally abusive partner, but also to grab, you know, life by the horns, you know, and step into his the, the best version of himself. Um, and as soon as I came up with that, I called Carlos and I said, I have this idea. This is the this is the scene. This is what I think the script is. I'm going to write this role for you. So that scene became pivotal. It, be, it, be, it became actually the, the, the emotional epicenter of the, of the movie. And it's very, um, they say, right where you know. Mm -hmm. And even though I haven't been in that exact situation, I feel that us as Latinos, uh, and, and particular me as, a, as, a, as an uh, immigrant and, and, and sons of immigrants, um, uh, it's, it's that thing, right? It's that, it's that, you know, I may not, be a rich person or I might not have connections here in town and I might not have 
um, all these things that other people have, but you will hear my voice. Mm. You're going to hear it. Um, that message, I think that that uh, for me, it it, it resounded. It, it it echoed in my head for such a long time. And it, this was, I think, the perfect way of putting it into screen, not only for myself, but for so many people from underrepresented communities, um, be it the Latino community, the African American community, the trans community, you know, that it's that, right? It's, it's, yeah. we may not be special according to your standards, but, but you will hear our voice. Yeah, very much so. And, and the way it was played, I mean, it was sort of a, almost like a revelation to you in a way, I felt, Carlos. Of course, of course. Well, um, but uh, the, during the movie, you can tell that I know, and I know how smart my brother is, uh, uh, putting aside his uh, disability. And even though I'm trying to protect him all the time, uh, I know he's probably smarter than me. And that 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 when when he utters this voice, uh, uh, we both are uh, uh, pretty uh, surprised by it, and and. And the way he expresses himself and the way he opens up, you know, showing that he can actually read lips. He, he, he knows exactly what to say. He, he, he wants me to translate it exactly to her. And he, want, he wants to tell her what it was supposed to be me telling her. Yeah. You know, and, 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 see, and it, it, it's just a, it's just an incredible scene. And it was very well um, uh, constructed. And uh, we were pretty emotional afterwards. We were like crying like crazy, the three of us. Uh, we did like, what, the two, 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 three takes? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was, I mean, I mean, Miguel wanted the emotion, but he didn't want the pouring. <laughs> and it was hard. The, the first time we were, the three of us, we, we, we started crying like crazy. And he was like, okay, listen, guys, calm down. <laughs> it's yeah. nice. It's nice, the emotion, but but control it. So we had to do it like, three times until we, 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 we get it right. Wow. Well, okay. My final question to you is um, your first time filmmaker, and now you are in contention for a potential Academy Award nomination. How is all this feeling? Uh, it's, it's a dream come true. It's, it's beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, when we set out to do this movie, we just set out to do a movie that was encapsulated the Venezuelan spirit that was good, that I knew and that we knew, the team knew that, okay, this is, we know what this movie is and we wanted to be a movie that inspires people both in Venezuela, but also that has some international appeal. And we want people from all over the world to, to see themselves reflected in this movie. So to get this kind of reaction, to get this, this um, uh, uh, nomination, I guess, as the as the representative of Venezuela to to represent our country in the in the Oscars, <laughs> it's beyond the our wildest imagination and dreams, and and we take it very seriously with a lot of pride, and we're we're here in the midst of this whole world of campaigning, uh, yeah, doing our doing our best and uh, and showing people our our spirit. Well, I want to thank you guys for taking this time out. And uh, it really is a lovely film. It reminded me of so many of the, uh, ironically, these old fashioned Hollywood films that used to leave you with this this warm feeling of hope, um, which, you know, is a gift, I think, especially in today's world. Thank that you so much. Great. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you.